Hey everyone, I'm Joel Green and welcome to Curiosity Quest Goes Green, the show that explores what you, the viewer, are curious about. Now today, our quest letter came to us from Melbourne, Washington. Stacy wrote, Dear Joel, I'm curious, can you do a show on a recycling center? Well, for the CQ Nation and all of you that have been watching Curiosity Quest Goes Green, you know we've been to a few of these places. But based on the amount of letters and fascination that you have for this topic, we know you want more. So Stacy, because of you, we're up in Marin County, where we have found a very unique, one-of-a-kind recycling center that we think you're gonna enjoy. So let's begin today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. So I'm here with Kim Shively. Now, Kim, tell us a little bit about this recycling center. Well, we are in San Rafael, California. It's about 20, 30 minutes north of San Francisco. And this facility was founded in around 1948 by a bunch of families who came together and saw that there were a lot of valuable resources being thrown out. How many people in the community does this recycling center serve? We serve about 33,000 customers in central Marin. OK. So it's so about not five cities, nine jurisdictions. So it's not massive. I mean, no. we're not, it's not massive, it's not but small. but small, quaint, and, yep. and enough. And it's been here since 1948? Yep, family owned and operated. So over the years, things have changed. A lot has changed, uh, primarily plastics. Plastics came in in the 50s and 60s and have kind of started to take over. We're seeing less glass, less newspaper, more plastic. When you and I met, I'll tell a quick backstory. I had just walked off stage, I was doing a keynote environmental presentation. You walked up to me, handed me your card and says, Joel, I really think you ought to come and check out this one of a kind place. You're gonna love these friends that we have helping us recycle. Tell us what are we gonna see before we get to the friends? So we have four facilities here. We have the recycling center. This is where all of the curbside bottles and cans and uh, paper gets processed. We have the transfer station in the middle. That's where the garbage goes before it goes to the landfill. Okay. There's no processing. Once it goes into the garbage can, it goes to the transfer station, then to the landfill. Oh, OK. Then we have the Marin Resource Recovery Center down the way. That is another processing center that takes primarily commercial residential self-haul materials. So construction, demolition materials, things like that. Then we also have the Householder Hazardous Waste Facility where uh, customers, small businesses and homeowners can bring their leftover paint, their batteries, their light bulbs, their pesticides, anything that's toxic and hazardous and shouldn't go into a landfill. And, and then we have our unique helpers. And then of course we have the other helpers. Okay, and we'll get to them later because I, I can't wait for them to see this. The curbside recycling is a little unique here because... We have what's called a dual stream system. Most people have a single stream system where you throw all of your recyclables into one container. We believe in keeping the paper fibers so that it can be used highest and best use. It can be, our paper can be made back into office paper, which is the most valuable resource. And we believe that keeps that resource pure and clean. So we put plastic, glass, metals, bottles, cans, containers in one side of the bin. Yeah. And then we put paper, cardboard, newspaper, junk mail, all of that goes in the other. And it's a specially designed split container yeah. that is emptied by a specially designed split <laughs> truck. Wow. So you'll get to see that when the truck tips the cart, the lids come open. One side goes bottles and cans, one side goes paper. Now, I, I've not seen that anywhere we've been. Is that common? It's not common. It's okay. not common. Wow. Now, how, do the residents know what to do? And are they educated on the this? The residents are highly educated and do a really good job keeping things clean on both sides of the containers. So let's go check that out. Yeah.
What is the largest thing that you've ever recycled? <laughs> Ooh, a <our> refrigerator. <laughs> a big bottle of soda? Uh, soda bottle? Probably tires. Yeah, a jug. A jug of water. My room! <laughs> So, Kim, after the trucks go through the neighborhoods, which some of your streets are pretty narrow here. Very narrow <laughs> and steep. And steep, yes, we experienced that. Once they pick up, they bring it back here, and then what happens? The trucks are a specially divided truck to match the carts, as I was saying. And they come in, and they dump half the plastic, the glass, the metal containers, bottles in here. And then he'll come in, and he'll dump the papers on this side. So what happens to all the glass, the plastics, the metals that we're looking at over here? There's a belt in this machinery that kind of shakes out the glass. So the heavy glass goes to the bottom, goes through a series of tubes, and comes out actually over there into a bunker. OK. Then the plastics and the metals, there are magnets that pull out the steel. Yeah. And that comes along a series of belts. And so pretty much what's left are contaminants and plastics and they'll sort out the number one, number two bottles. Those are plastic resin types. They'll pull those out, and then everything else will get bailed as a mixed rigid bale. Where are all those going from there? Aluminum and glass stay local. Steel stays local. The plastics all go overseas. So then take me through the fibers and the, the papers. Okay. What happens to the papers now? Papers are bailed in those big bales. They're about a ton. Yeah. They weigh about 1,800 pounds each. OK. Those, again, go to, some go to the South Bay, most go overseas. Overseas, OK. So this process, it's pretty fast to, to basically separate everything out at this point, right? Yeah, we have, the way our system's set up is in the morning, when these things go over the belts, in the morning, it's the plastics, glasses, and metals. So the hand sorters will be pulling that out. Wow. They finish that process up late morning. And then in the in the early afternoon, they run the papers over the house. Ah, gotcha. So in addition to having your trucks out in the community, you're saying the community comes to you? The community can bring in their bottles and cans that have California redemption value on them. OK. Any of the beverage bottles, plastic, glass, aluminum, they can bring them here and sell them back and make a little bit of cash. I have not been to another center that I mean, you're doing the same thing they're doing, basically. You know, you're taking all the cans and bottles and you're recycling, get the redemption value, and you're allowing them to do the same thing, the community do the same thing? Yes. But it's unique that it's here at the same place versus yes. being out in a shopping center or yes. where a lot of those buyback centers are. We're your one-stop recycle shop. What is a transfer station? Uh, I guess something that delivers things. Um, when people recycle and it goes to a landfill, um, you, or you recycle, no, not that. You recycle plastic or something? Oh, you go and dump them, and then you put it on something and it transfers it into another, like a can, it can be a car, it transfers so it can be used for something else. Um, it's probably where they pick apart like all the trash and stick it in separate piles to go different places like where it belongs. Where they make recycled objects into something else. So Kim, what is a transfer station? The transfer station is where all the garbage comes and gets transferred to a landfill. Even though this is a recycling center and it's still you're taking garbage as well. We do collect garbage. We don't sort through the garbage. Okay. Once it gets thrown in the garbage, it comes to this pit, and then it goes to the landfill, where it stays. So there are trucks here we witnessed that are actually taking the uh, the papers and the plastic, the bottles and the cans, and then literally right next door, they're bringing trash? Yes. Wow. We're inside. All these trucks just tipped right in front of us, and now they're like, what's going on here? They're going to break the material down, scoop it up, put it into a very large truck where it will get transferred to the landfill. I'm looking over the shoulder right here, and I see stuff falling out from there. Where is that coming from? That's coming from the Resource Recovery Center, which we'll go look at. That's where the commercial residential self hall. So people bring in their own loads, or people rent big debris boxes for demolition, construction, spring cleaning jobs. That'll all go in there. And then they sort through everything, and the stuff that's not a resource gets pulled over these belts and dumped into the pit. What is your diversion rate here in Marin County? We are at 75% right now, which means every 
everything we collect, only 25% of it is garbage. The rest are resources. You realize there are so many communities out there that just went, what? I mean, you know it, right? Yeah, you're pretty, we're there. You're we're pretty proud, 75. right? Yeah, in Cal state of California, there's new rules to get to 75%, and you're already there. Wow, wow. But we want to go farther. Our goal is 94%. Oh, my goodness. You know, I've been to a few landfills, and it's not, it doesn't smell that bad. <laughs> I don't know why. We're removing a lot of the food waste now from the garbage, and it's the food that starts to really smell. Which is where our unique helpers are going to come in a little bit later on, right? Yep. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Did you know that the United States makes up only 4% of the world's population, but is the lead producer in garbage? All right, Kim, we are in a ginormous building. Where are we? This is the Marin Resource Recovery Center. This is where... <laughs> I didn't see a sneak up on me. Whoa, where okay. big equipment comes. Yes. This is where commercial businesses, residential businesses, self-hauling materials, landscapers, contractors, homeowners doing cleanups, repairs, remodels. They'll bring those items here and dump them. And then what about all the equipment behind us that's going on? What is that doing? That is moving around all of the materials to get it up to the belts so that it can be hand sorted. So they do some floor sorting, moving the stuff around. They'll move out some of the big pieces, that the big piece of wood, the big piece of cardboard. Everything else will get pushed onto the belts where people will pull out the concrete, the okay. wood, the drywall, wow. like that. bottles and cans. So percentage-wise, how much of what's coming in this building is actually going to a landfill? It goes anywhere from low to upper 20s. Wow, just even in this building, right? In this building. And why are we having sprinklers above us? That's the misting system, because there's so much dust in here. It would be really hard to breathe if they didn't have the, the mist. It kind of grabs the dust and makes it easier for you to breathe. Ah, there's so many moving parts behind us. It's like, like eye candy, a lot to look at, you know? Is there anything you don't recycle here? Plastic garbage bags. Okay, which in some communities, they are recycled. Yeah. Okay, where are we going to next? Next, we're gonna go to the hazardous waste facility. Wow, just one building, next building, next building. Yep. Wow, cool. Name something that is not recyclable. People, food, trash, lace, bracelets, some plastics, piece of pizza. <laughs> oh, wow. Nowadays, just about everything's recyclable. All right, Kim, I just saw a vehicle open the back of their door. People take stuff out of it. Where are we? We are in the Marin Household Hazardous Waste Facility. <laughs> you have that, too. That's our mouthful. This is a partnership that we run with the San Rafael Fire Department and the JPA, which is the Joint Powers Authority that oversee all the hazardous and solid waste. So, I mean, I'm looking at electronics, like, like computers, electronics, obviously paints. What else? We take batteries, bulbs, uh, pesticides, paint thinners, motor oil. Pretty much most things that people would have at their house that is considered exactly. HHW, or household yeah. hazardous waste. Are you processing any of it here? Some of the paint is processed, and we have a new paint care program where the paint comes in, we can actually bulk it, sell it back to the public, or if, they, if we keep it in the container that it came in, it's pretty full, it's usable. We'll put it in a reuse facility where the public can come and just take it. It's free. So you have a place where the public can not only drop stuff off, but pick stuff up. We do. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Hey, check this out. You can light a 60 volt bulb for six hours by recycling just one plastic bottle. We moved over to the dusty part. <laughs> yes, we have no more misters. No misters, and what, what's going on behind us here? So this is our large construction uh, demolition area. We do concrete that we grind up into road base. Oh. And then we have dirt, soil that we pull out contaminants, and then that gets recycled as well. You know, it's funny because we talk about concrete. It's not something that, like, every person is pulling out of their house right. but when it comes to construction and rebuilding and this is very common i'm sure you get tons of this right we, literally <laughs> Lit 
<laughs> Literally tons of it. How do they pull out the middle pieces out of the concrete? So they'll crush the concrete down into smaller pieces and then the, the uh, rebar just pulls apart. Okay. Then it'll go into these machines where it's ground up into the fine, uh, the fine pieces that are, you see that make up the mountain. Now what's the, the inflow of concrete versus the outflow of you know, ground up concrete? What, what comes in actually goes out. Really? Yeah. So you don't have any, I mean, I guess it's pretty balanced. There's, there it at. is. There's pretty, there's a little bit of contamination in here, but really not much. Like that plastic pipe. Yeah. You can't really see much that can't be reused, recycled again. And this is going out for road base, you say? Yeah, a lot of it. A, a lot of the, what, freeways around here, the roads around here? Primarily. Okay. Wow. All right, the guy's going to get in there. They shut it down for us temporarily so we can get out here and, and walk around, but he's going to fire it back up, so we're going to get out. We're going to get some cool pictures of it. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Did you know the average American wastes over 230 pounds of food waste each year? You want to learn about the unique helpers here at this recycling center? Tell us who these unique helpers are. We have peacocks, we have chickens, we have turkeys, we have <laughs> pigs. Oh my. And oh they all my. help keep the place clean. Now, this is the part, like, like I said, when you and I first met, you were like, Joel, you've never seen anything like this, trust me. I'm like, OK, I've seen a lot of, like, no, 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 no. You said, Joel, we have some unique helpers. And then you told me about them, and I literally went, oh my gosh, are you serious? serious. How do these animals help in the process of recycling? They eat the extra food waste that comes from the restaurants. OK. They also help keep the area clean. We have bugs and, I mean, we have, we don't think that it smells bad, but there's an odor here. Sure, sure. And there are bugs and other things that are attracted to those odors, and all the animals around help keep that in check. Now, there's gonna be, I'm sure some people that watch this go, oh my goodness, that's so sad, the pigs are eating, like, stuff that people are scraping off their plates and stuff like that. That's not true, is it? No. No, 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 no. so let's explain what kind of food the pigs are actually eating. The pigs are eating the produce that comes from really nice stores, farmers markets, things like that, that we might not necessarily want to buy. Maybe there's a little blemish on it, or the next shipment of produce is in, so they've got to get rid of the other stuff that's taking up the shelf space. Okay. So that comes in and goes to the pigs. If we walk up, are they going to, like, they're not going to, are they, oh, you're saying don't walk up? They might. They might? <laughs> Let's just see how close we can get, because, you know, I don't want to make anybody mad, but. How do how are they helping in the process? They're just beautiful. They're just beautiful. You, were you need to add some beauty to <laughs> what we're doing. <laughs> oh my goodness! And you have different, you know, it looks like areas for them to be in as well. Yes. So we try and put them in enclosures um, at ta different times of their life cycle or in the evening to keep them safe from other wildlife. But they also have all of the space to roam and the trees to hang out in. I realize there's like. Like, like houses, miniature houses up there. And those are for? Turkey condos, chicken coops. Wow, and how did all of this come about? Joe. Joe. Joe Garbarino, <laughs> yes. Is there any way I can meet Joe and talk to him about this place? Yeah, I hear he's hanging out around here somewhere. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Did you know that recycling one ton of cardboard would save 46 gallons of oil? All right, I'm here with Joe. Now, Joe, tell us, what do you do here? <laughs> well, it's what I did do. <laughs> I love so that. So I don't do a lot much. Uh, <laughs> no, none of the heavy lifting and uh, none of the planning. Most of it is all here. It's just making what we've got better in the form of recycling that more than we can do now to get down to zero waste. OK. And this is all part of it, everything that you've seen. So let me introduce, this is chairman of the board, and you pretty much started this, yes. this company yeah. here, huh? Back in what, 19? I was here in 1955. 1955, so it began a few years prior to you taking it did. over, right? Right. How has the recycling world changed from, ni excuse us, from 1955 to now the 2000s? Well, in 1955, we were scavengers. We were always scavengers. I was never a garbage man. Okay. We scavenged through the waste. We made more money, as much money scavenging 
as we did from the ratepayer of 35, 40 cents a month. The more you salvage, the more money you save. So uh, I got uh, an opportunity back in uh, 1969 uh, uh, to go out and get a grant from the state to start a curbside program. It was the first curbside program countywide in the United States. Wow, from 55 to about 1980, yeah. there really was no curbside. No, we had open trucks. Oh. You got the garbage in your back, you climbed those seven sups up into heaven, and you dumped it. Once you dumped it, you picked out the wine bottle, Coke bottles, Pepsi bottles. So bottle, when you say scavenger, rats. you're literally scavenging yeah. out. Yeah, wow. that's what we did. Effective mode of recycling. Wow. And you did it because you had to do it or you were going to pay for it. But Gosh. now it got to the point that uh, people truly want to recycle. They don't care how many cans you pick up. Yeah. What do you do after you pick it up? And they were right. I mean, how did the, the pitch It start? started one day when I saw 200 loaves of bread in the transfer station over here. I said, where did where'd that come from? So I found out from the office, they paid in the office, and the guy comes in and dumps 200 loaves every, every three or four days. I say, hey, don't dump here anymore. I'll take care of the bread from now on. So I went out and I bought three pigs. Why, why do this? Why have pigs here and, and I don't know, why? <laughs> well, it was just one, one more uh, product that I could recycle. It was food waste. At yeah. that time, we weren't doing anything with food waste. Today we have... Uh, it's the big talk. Uh, Everybody's yeah, focusing well, yeah, on it. Yeah, <laughs> everybody has a bin to put their yard waste, and so now you can put your food waste in there too. Yeah. And we're also collecting uh, waste from supermarkets, and uh, we bring it in the building here. We grind it into a slurry. We bring it down the corner to the sewer plant. They mix the liquid waste with our solid waste, and they're turning that into electricity by putting it into a silo and making methane gas. Wow. But I always make sure I get a few apples out of the deal. <laughs> for my piggies. But otherwise, we get all kinds of products in for the pig. Here we get odd things, 55 gallon drums of peanut butter. <laughs> and they had to get rid of the peanut butter. And so hey, I didn't call, know. Call, call me next time, by the way, on that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't know how to get it out. I was gonna get a chisel and chisel the top out. But my mechanic said, Joe, what are you doing? I said, I got a bunch of peanut butter. I want to give it to the piggies. They said, Joe, there's two holes, a little one and a big one. Put an air hole in here. Tip the cannon sometime, give it the air, and all the peanut butter comes out into a big trough. They had peanut butter on their eyes and their eyebrows all over. So you, th these pigs never go hungry is what you're saying? Never go hungry. How can pigs help in the recycling process? They can't. I don't think they can. Okay, weird, but pooping and doing compost. <laughs> mud? So they make mud? Yeah. Mud goes through the pipes? <laughs> um, they can eat your scrap vegetables and like banana peels and stuff. They like all that stuff because it's sweet to them. The bad stuff that comes out of them? <laughs> To be recycled, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. No, never. <laughs> never. What do you mean never? They can't. They nope. can't. <laughs> they can't. It's amazing how we're getting that today. No way. Huh? They can't help. Are you sure? Yeah, because they have a pig toe. They have a what? They have a pig toe. <laughs> they can't. I want to thank Joe, Kim, and everyone out here for showing us this one-of-a-kind unique recycling facility. And I especially want to thank you, Stacy, for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. Now, if there's something you want to know more about, let me hear from you. Go to curiositychest.org, click on the Send Us On A Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And it could be you that sends us on our next green adventure. Now remember, this is our planet. It's our responsibility to take care of it. So I wonder, have you gone green? I'm Joel Green, and I'll see you next time. Man, it's beautiful. Whew. New batteries are being put in me right now, so because I feel, I feel, I feel like sluggish. Thank you. Let's just give me words. Um, sluggish. What else? Slow. Slow. Oh, I feel so much better now. Wow, I have new batteries. This is so great. Awesome. Adam, don't turn away from the camera. Adam, why are you getting off camera? Adam, look at the camera. He never wants to have his face on camera. Adam. <laughs>
always wants his face on camera. No! Yes, what? No! Camera hog. If you'd like to order a copy of this episode or a previous episode, visit us at www.curiositystore.com. The cost is $24.95.